All right. Let's uh, today we're going to cover uh, quiz two. We're going to go over that, and hopefully after today, uh, this the concepts, the basic concepts of defining a class and creating instances of a class, you will know. That's the goal for today. Just to get the basic concept. You know, there's a lot of sophisticated and complicated concepts that we're not covering related to object-oriented programming. We are covering the, the simplest possible set, subset of, uh, all, of all the concepts that you really need to know to work with um, classes and objects. So uh, many of you are not yet understanding how to work, how to define a class and create instances of the class. So today's main goal is to, to understand that. And then uh, on the final, that uh, you should be able to answer the questions correctly on the final. And now we have another quiz coming up, uh, which uh, I think is a week from today. Is that right? Something like that. And that, um, that quiz will not have anything to do with classes. So on quiz three, that we're going to look uh, just at um, implementing functions that deal with arrays and vectors. But on the final exam, there'll be a problem that deals with uh, defining and uh, instantiating classes. Now, I sent out an email uh, with some changes to the schedule, and I want to talk about that briefly. So I'm, I'm canceling lab eight and lab nine, so we don't need to turn those in. Uh, but if you've already started working on those or if you want extra credit, you can turn those in by the, the deadlines. So I didn't change the deadlines on those. Whatever, yeah, something. I'm not sure yet. I've got to take a look at that. There's some significant extra credit if you want to do those labs. That's a good way to boost your score. Probably I'll give the full points. That sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. There's a link there, right here. Watch. See that? Yep. You just go there. Right. Now I, I haven't. Uh, and then you got to agree, to, unless you disagree. Okay. And uh, then you fill this out. Now, I haven't done this, so I, there's some place in there where you need to identify yourself. So you have to put your name, and you have to say what class you're taking, like CSE 201. Uh, you should put that in. I don't know where you say that. And it may assume you're a psychology major. I think that, that may be in there as well. I'm just not sure. Does anyone know? Okay. At the very end, it asks you for that identification. And then the Dr. Kaufman, who's running this survey, is going to send me a list. And uh, we did this last quarter. Sends me a list of the people who completed the survey. And then, uh, so, and I, I pushed back the, uh, the deadline of assignment three. So I want to give you a little more time to uh, work on that. So March 11th. And then on March 12th, we'll review that assignment three. And then there's assignment four. Now, assignment three and assignment four cover the same material. It's really one assignment. I just split it up and made it two assignments. But the, 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 there's the assignment four is not more difficult than assignment three. It does not cover new material that assignment three doesn't have. Uh, so they're just, and this, in a way, it's kind of like the culmination of this, um, of this course, is the ability to work with the assignment three and four. 
And the other, so that's, that's most of what this course is about. The other part is this, this idea of classes and objects, which we're going to talk about today, which quiz two is about. And quiz one was really getting ready to do both quiz two and three, to cover classes and objects and to think about how to implement algorithms. Now, labs, uh, lab eight and nine, you know, I wanted to get into uh, searching and sorting, which is a, a big part. That's when you really start thinking about algorithms and how to, to implement uh, algorithms and understand how they, they perform. Like when a problem gets large, does the algorithm run too slowly? Or so there's this concept of efficiency. So an algorithm needs to be efficient in how it uses time and, and memory. But we won't get to that. So that's 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 strike from the from the schedule. All right. So let's jump right into quiz two. So here it is, the egg cart class. Now, the thing here is, you know, normally we have these variables like an x. You go int x. So you declare a variable called x. You got a name, and you're creating an instance of an integer. Or you go double y. You're creating an instance of a, a double precision floating point value called y. So the thing has a name. Uh, just like that, we can create an instance of egg carton. We go egg carton, carton one, or egg carton, carton two. So we have the data type followed by the variable name. And, uh, but these, this data type is a complex data type uh, because it has, it has two values in it. It has two ints in it. So it's, you can think of it as like a, a wrapper, a simplification of something that's complicated. So you want to deal with more than one piece of information and uh, you want to deal with it as if it were a, a single unit. Like, give me the egg carton. Tell me how many eggs are in the egg carton. So it's this one thing. We're dealing with one thing. But inside, it's, it's, uh, it's actually the state of the egg carton is represented by two integers. So that's a, that concept of state. So you have these in instances of ca classes have a state. And the other thing that you might want to think about is that these classes, it's not an egg carton. It's just a model of an egg carton. It's our simplification or our representation of an egg carton. And you may notice that in this class, we don't have get total number of brown eggs. We just have get total eggs. So our simplification of an egg carton, our model of an egg carton, doesn't give all the possible functionality that you could get uh, from a model. So we could have added additional uh, functions, like get, to get a number of brown eggs. So we, we pass in the number of brown eggs in the constructor, and it's stored internally. But once it's in there, we, we can't get it out. We can't, the code can't determine how many brown eggs are in there. It can only determine the total number of eggs. And that's just by design. I mean, we could have designed this differently. But in the context of a larger problem, this model may be sufficient. And I want to tell you that, you know, most programs these days are written using classes just like this. So when you go to solve a computing problem, maybe you're implementing an accounting system, or you're, you're, a, you're a researcher for a pharmaceutical company and you're looking at performance of a new drug and you need to do a lot of data analysis, whatever it is you're doing there, uh, you'll be defining and using these classes. So this is this is essential uh, concept for uh, modern uh, computing languages and their use in the workplace. All right. <coughs> So the egg carton has up to 12 eggs. It could be empty, could have any number of brown and white eggs, but it can't have more than 12 eggs. And the problem is, this is the UML class diagram. It shows you, you know, visually with a figure, um, the three sections, the class name, the member variables, and the member functions. 
So that's just something you've got to know. You've got to know there's a distinction between variables and functions. A function is something you invoke, you call, and a variable is something that you access. The variable represents storage and computer memory. The variable has some state in it. If it's an integer, then it could be minus 7, it could be plus 11. It's just an integer. You can modify that, the state of that integer. And just like that, the two, the two integers taken together, they're two separate states taken together considered as a whole. That would be the state of an Eckhartian instance. So you should think in terms of state. You use that word state. What is the state? What's the state of the weather? What's the state of the union? Every year the President of the United States gives a state of the union address, right? What's the conditions? Giving a description of what, what, what is the conditions prevailing in the country at the time, right? So what is the state of something? All right. Now here is the declaration. And um, basically the problem was to implement all of the functions that uh, are uh, shown in the declaration of the class and then to implement some test code. Let's go ahead and do that. Implement the egg uh, carton constructor. Let's take a look at that. So here is the, the declaration of the constructor. How do we know it's a constructor? That's because the function name is the same name as the class. That's what a constructor does. That's, that's how you identify a constructor. Also, the constructor has no return value. The purpose of the constructor is to uh, set the initial state of instances of that class. Let's go ahead and implement the constructor. <coughs> so this is what the implementation will look like. We have the declaration. We just copy it and use the braces. And inside the braces, we add code that runs when the constructor is invoked, when the constructor runs. So what we need to do is initialize the state of the class. The, class, the, the composite state of the class is represented by the state of the, its member variables. You can't set a function to a value. A function is, is just, a, is just a, is a collection of instructions. It doesn't have a state. Function doesn't have a state. It's the variables that have state. And the constructor, when we create an instance of the class, the constructor will run to initialize the state of that object. So we got to set brown eggs to something. What are we going to set brown eggs? It has to be set to something. It can be set to you know, 0, 1, 2, 12. It can't be set to 13. It can't be set to minus 1. I mean, it can, but it would, it would go against the meaning of the problem that we're solving. But we're we don't just set it arbitrary to anything, arbitrarily to anything. The calling code, the thing that's using the class, is passing in the number of brown eggs. So we set our brown eggs variable to this... Um, this value that's being passed in and which is identified uh, by this uh, first parameter called number of brown eggs. Let me do it like this. Same with the uh, white eggs. So we have two variables. That's your constructor right there. It's uh, pretty straightforward. You're on the final exam, I'm going to have give you a class and if there's zero member variables, then you don't do anything. If there's one member variable, you've got to set the value of that one member variable. If there's 20 member variables, you've got to set the value of those 20 member variables. It's very straightforward. Okay. I won't give you 20. All right. Any questions on this here? Now we don't use this. We don't have. We use this if there's a, if there's a, a naming uh, conflict between the member variables and a parameter. So the parameter and the and the member variables could be identical. In that case, we use this to distinguish between them. And this would point to, you use this to label, the uh, 
the, the member variables of the class, not the parameters. All right, let's go through here. Let's do uh, let's do all of these. So we're just going to go down the list here and implement all of these functions. Oops. Add brown eggs. So we want to add the brown eggs. So we have we have a record of how many brown eggs we have. And uh, there it is right there. It's a member variable called brown eggs. And we're passing in an integer n. So that's the number of brown eggs. We're going to add that many brown eggs to how many brown eggs we already have. So this is what we want to do. That's the simple case. We just have our brown eggs, and we add the brown eggs that the calling code wants us to add in. But um, you know, we have to check some conditions first. We want to make sure that you know that this n that we're adding into our brown eggs doesn't make us exceed the capacity of the egg carton. So we need to do a test. If our current brown eggs plus our current white eggs, plus the number of eggs that we want to add, if it's bigger than 12, we can't do it. If that condition is, um, is false, then we're OK. Actually, we can go a little more than that. We can check to see if n is negative. Right, so we can disallow negative value. It didn't say anything about that. So we could do more than that. We could check to see if, if n was negative. And I could describe that as a precondition, that the function is never called with a negative value. All right. Any questions on, on this one? There's other ways of expressing that condition. You know, you could say, you know, you could put that, but essentially the, it all boils down to this, this condition right here, that, you know, if we add in the egg, if we add in n eggs that are brown, is it going to exceed, you know, if we add those into the ones we already have, is it more than 12? If it is, then we're not going to do anything. Oh, we have to do one more thing down here. We add in the n, and then we return uh, true. See, the function returns uh, true if, if we can add the value in. If we can add those eggs. If we can't add the eggs, then we return false. All right. Do it again. Yeah, you can do it like that. That's right. Let's do it like that. That's a good idea. Maybe that's easier. We could do less than or equal to 12. And then uh, just swi switch these around. So now if, um, if this is less than or equal to 12, then we can, then we're good. So we could do it that way. So there's so many different ways, there's so many variations to this. And even this condition could be stated differently. You know, if, 
if n is bigger than 12 minus brown eggs minus white eggs. You could do it like that. Or if, if n is less than or equal to 12 minus brown eggs minus white eggs. You can use that condition. All right, remove brown eggs. Now, to, actually, let's do add white eggs. And to to uh, to add white eggs, it's the same thing. It's it's just the renaming of the variables there. In fact, we can leave the condition the same here. I just copied that, and we're just adding the brown eggs. That's it. One little change. We have the same implementation there. What about remove brown eggs? Well, you know, it's going to probably look a lot like this. You know, we're going to test the end. We're say, is the end valid? If the end is valid, we're going to we're going to subtract the end out. If the end is not valid, uh, then we're going to return false. If the end is valid. Then we're going to do brown eggs minus equals n. Return true. Otherwise, we'll return false. And that's similar to this pattern up here. We're checking so if. This condition means that n is valid, and then we're going to return true. So I'm trying to stick to the same pattern here, right? So we, we could, this the logic could be expressed a little differently. This could be if n is invalid, then we return false. All right. So then the problem is, how do we express this this idea that n is valid? Well, n. n has got to be less than or equal to what? If I have, I want to take, I want to remove three brown eggs. How many brown eggs have to be in there? Three. If there's two brown eggs in there, how, I can't remove three. So that means n has to be less than or equal to Total eggs? What if the what if there's twelve white eggs in there? How do I remove three brown eggs? Brown yeah, brown eggs. N's gotta be less than a number less than or equal to the number of brown eggs. Otherwise I can't remove N of them. You think you could get that on the final? That problem? You have to think about. That, that reasoning, right? It's a, it's a it's a comparison. You have to take, you know, I mean, in intuitively and in language, in English, we could say it and we can understand it. It's obvious, right? You give me a carton of eggs, and I tell you to remove three, and you say, sorry, I can't do that. There's only two in there. I mean, you're executing a program in a sense, right? So, translating that that knowledge, I mean, that that's that 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 logic. Representing it in in, a, in 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 as an algorithm. That's the problem that we're working on, or that's the skill that we're learning. Now that logic is going to be similar to the. Oh, missing a a brace here. I'm just going to copy these uh, these lines here and paste them into remove white eggs. And I know that it's it's um, it's uh, pretty much it's the same thing. We're just operating on a different member variable. So you tell me to remove n white eggs. Well, n's got to be less than or equal to the number of white eggs that are there. If that's the case, 
I'll remove them and I'll return true. If it's not the case, I'll return false. Now let's do it. This is another easy one here. Get total eggs. Can you get it at this point, what this is going to look like? It's return what? We need to return an integer. We have our member state here, our object state represented by these two variables. We, we know how many brown eggs are in the carton. We know how many uh, white eggs are in the carton. So how many total eggs are there? That's well, brown eggs plus white eggs. This one is uh, harder. Didn't we have remove a random egg? Maybe I'd, I'm not solving the same problem here. Oh, remove randomly chosen egg. Do I have that in there? I don't have it in here. Oh, see, I was um, just developing the quiz, and I guess I didn't have that in there. Remove randomly chosen egg. I think the number of problems is uh, a little high, actually. And uh, these, oh, these are not correctly defined. This needs to be in there. Now, on the quiz, I wouldn't take it off for missing this. So I'm, I'm looking for your understanding of the of the concepts and not necessarily getting I want some some correctness on the syntax but it doesn't it can be close it doesn't have to be perfect so if you missed this part of it for instance I I wouldn't mind or I wouldn't I wouldn't take any points off so these functions are what are called global functions until you uh, prefix them with the a uh, name of the class. Then they become uh, member functions of that class. All right, let's remove one egg of each color. So if if there is if there is one of each if there is one of each color, then we can remove it. We're going to take one out. Actually, we can just use this decrement operator. And if we if we can't if there isn't one of each uh, we can't do it, so we return false. Okay, now the problem boils down to coming up with that condition that expresses this concept that there's one of each color. So there has to be at least one brown egg and at least one white egg. So the brown eggs 
have to be greater than zero and the white eggs have to be greater than zero. Or you could say greater than or equal to one. You could do it like that. But the here, I, for, I think it's, uh, this, is my, this is the way I would like to have it for myself. Any question on that one? All right, now here's the one that's uh, tougher. It's the remove randomly chosen egg. You know, I thought when I when I was developing the quiz, I, I, create, I created 10 questions because it, it adds up to 100. I think I probably put too many questions on there. But I threw in one that was difficult, and this is the one I thought was the most difficult. Your question back there. Huh? No, how, it, well, let's look at the name of the function. Remove one egg of each color. If there's three brown eggs and zero white eggs, can I remove one of each color? No, because there isn't any white eggs. So you've got to have at least one brown egg and at least one white egg. I remember your paper. The grader didn't notice that, and he goes, and I looked at it, and I said, and I sorry, I, I took a point off for that. So, um, <coughs> all right. So, let's do this. Uh, remove randomly chosen egg. So now, this one is a little more complicated. So I have to think through this one. With, you have to go through, mentally, you have to go through the test cases. And they have the special cases. So if, if, the, um, if the brown eggs are zero, and the white eggs are zero, then we can't do it. So, you know, you go through the test cases. Well, I'm not going to do that. Let's see. So there's that special case. Now, what about the special case that um, that there are only only white eggs? If brown eggs are zero, there's many ways of doing this, by the way. And uh, one of the one of the arts of coming up with this these these algorithms, you can call it an algorithm, is um, is picking that form which is the most readable to the people that are going to work with the code. So if there are no brown eggs, but there are white eggs, see, we know at this point, we know that there are white eggs because if brown eggs are zero and white eggs were zero, this would have been true and we would have returned. So when we're at this point, we know that one of them is not zero. Well, if brown eggs is zero, then, well, the white eggs must be non-zero. And if the white eggs are non-zero, then let's remove a white egg. And we succeeded. Huh? It means uh, decrement the number of white eggs. It means this. That's what that means. Mm -hmm. 
if white eggs are zero at this point, then we know that the brown eggs must be non-zero. And so we have to, de we decrement the brown eggs. So at this point, if we don't, if we haven't returned false or true at this point, we know that we have at least one um, white egg and one brown egg. Oh, by the way, you know, to really understand this, I, you have to read through this. Um, you have to read through this and sort of implement this requirement here. I'm going to read through this right now. Provide an implementation for the remove randomly chosen egg. The function should sometimes remove a brown egg and sometimes remove a white egg. So we don't know which color it's going to remove. If there are no eggs and the function returns false to indicate that the operation is not possible. If there are eggs of only one color, then the function should remove an egg of that color only. So it's not, at that point it's not random. If there are zero white eggs and one or more brown eggs, then we're going to take one brown egg out. And it's not in a sense random. It's the point where it becomes random is when there's at least one brown egg and at least one white egg. Use the RAND function, the modulo operator, and if statements to solve this problem. All right. So I, I think this one was, was a little on the tough side. All right. So now we need to choose a randomly, we need to choose... So um, we need to choose uh, choose randomly between uh, between uh, brown and uh, white. Let's generate a random value. And divide by two. So if we divide, if we get a number and we, we get a random integer and we divide by two and we take the remainder, then uh, we're going to have a zero or a one. And it's, it's arbitrary. Let's say that uh, zero is for brown egg. So if n is zero, let's uh, remove a brown egg. If it's one, then we'll remove a white egg. That's that. Almost. Then we also, we need to return uh, true. I think that one, that was a little challenging because there were people like in the class that got it. So it was not impossible. <laughs> Any questions on that one? Um, we return false in the case that there are no eggs at all in the carton, which is up here. That's the only time we return false. When both brown and white eggs are zero. In all other cases, we can remove one egg. Now, you know, some people, th there's different ways of expressing this. This may be confusing. So you might do something like this. That's the same thing. It's just more code, but maybe it's, it expresses the idea better. 
And maybe instead of an if, we make it an else if. Maybe that's the way you want to do it. Do you know, the way that makes sense to you. Because I know at this point that white eggs have to be bigger than zero because up here we would have returned false if both of them were zero. So if brown eggs are zero, white eggs has got to be bigger than zero. Another way to do that is to put in an assertion. That's another way to, and, uh, you know, to check your, your logic. So, okay, I, I think white eggs are greater than zero at this point. Let's just throw an assertion in there so that when the program runs, it'll tell me I got it wrong. Oops. That's a VI command. Are now the test cases and... Um, let me show you what I wanted from the test cases. We need to create an egg carton. And when we create an egg carton, there's a constructor. It takes uh, two values. This is how, that's what the constructor is going to look like. There's only one constructor. The constructor takes two values. When you, when you invoke the constructor, and this is the syntax for invoking the constructor, you have to pass in those two values. What are the two values? The first value is the number of brown eggs. The second value is the number of white eggs. We're not passing in the capacity. The capacity is, is fixed at 12. The capacity is, um, you know, in the bean jar class, we have a capacity. And we have different size bean jars. But in this example here, the egg carton is always just size 12. We don't, we don't allow the, the size of the egg carton to vary. So it's a different problem. And let's see, I think I'm, I asked for... Um, or is it the add brown eggs function so I want you to execute all parts of the brown the add brown eggs functions code and uh, and I suggest here that um, to start with two brown eggs and three white eggs and then see if add brown eggs works correctly and then uh, try adding four brown eggs and then add four brown eggs again and watch it fail the second time we add four brown eggs. And then also include additional tests that test these other special cases. All right, so that's uh, two and three. I think the number of problems is a little high in the, on the quiz, actually. So in the final, I won't give a, as many questions related to a class. Uh, I might cut it back to four, something like that. So we here we have two and three. You know, it's not required based on the, the statement of the problem to assert the size at this point, so let's leave that out. Let's, uh, let's do this. Let's call on egg carton one Let's call add brown eggs four. And that will return true. Because the total number of eggs is five, and we add four, we're going to get nine. So we should get nine total eggs after we add four brown eggs. And, uh, but if we try to add four more brown eggs, you know, we're going from nine to 13, 
That should fail. So add brown eggs should return false. So we test for that. And the total number of eggs should remain at nine. So we test again that total. So this is, here we're constructing tests that just use the functions that we've, um, that we've implemented. We don't have a function that does get brown eggs. We didn't, ha we didn't have get brown eggs. We could have put it in there, but we didn't. All right, let's try, um, let's try the other test that I suggested, which is um, those other special cases. Let's do egg carton two. What did I say, 12? Include tests that handle the boundary cases where there are no eggs at all, 12 brown eggs and no white eggs, and no brown eggs and 12 white eggs. Okay, so that's three more cases. And I, I, I think it was a bit long, actually. This is, uh, was too long. So we had, let's, here's the case where we have um, no eggs. And uh, let's add, let's add, uh, Let's add, um, you know, say five. And this is carton two. That's where we start at zero, zero. This is where we start with uh, 12 brown eggs. I need to finish now, right? Okay. And then uh, let's add five. That should fail. And the total should remain at 12. There's a test there. And so on. Actually, I, I need to stop today. I have a, a survey for you to fill out. And um, the rest of it is similar. I can finish that uh, on our next meeting on Monday. Any any pressing question at this point? We'll finish these last details. Yeah, back there. Where where is it? Like here. Oh, we're, we're creating an instance of carton one. We're not defining the constructor. The two colons are used when you're providing an implementation of a, a function. Here, we're calling the constructor. Now, I've got a survey for you. Please stay and fill this out. Can you start passing that out? And then I will disappear. And then uh, we'll meet again on, uh, on Monday. <laughs>